Hey guys, so we're going to go over the remesh workflow. Now this is going to be one of the most challenging ways of modeling because you're going to want to try to stay non-destructive throughout the entire process if possible, or at least semi-non-destructive. But then on top of that, you're going to be creating a high and a low poly kind of at the same time with the mesh that you're creating. So it's not even like a mid-poly workflow to high or mid-poly to low or just a high to low workflow. It's something else, okay? So we're just going to get started with the cube and we're going to cut up kind of a shape that you might find on like firearms or something like that a little bit and might be doing some box cuts into it things like this in this nature okay so i'll shift click go ahead and cut here and pull that out that way for now anyways maybe it stops a little bit short of that all right, so the idea is to keep things as non-destructive as possible, which means you're going to more than likely want to use weighted bevels. But there's an order of kind of how you're going to do different things here. So it's going to get rather complicated, and this is definitely going to be well beyond, a, I would say, a beginner tutorial necessarily. But you'll see what I'm talking about as we go through this process. So uh, firearm pieces and parts, they end up doing all kinds of nonsense like this. And you kind of work them as if you're machining them yourself, right? Like So they're usually blocks of aluminums, and they're... Uh, cut the parts and pieces more or less something like so all right now the remesh workflow in general the way people have been doing it is they'll take a shape like this and they might even add bevels to it or whatever the case and uh, but what they'll do is they'll add the remesh modifier we we'll keep this a little bit low res for this but uh, we'll go ahead and drop it down a little bit so they'll remesh it like so all right and they'll take it up to whatever amount they need in this case you can see where it uh, 0 0.02 meters so if that's confusing you a little bit what you can do is you can go to the scene settings and change the um, length to millimeters and you'll see that makes a little bit more sense now we're at 20 millimeters all right guys are going down pretty low say like one millimeter two millimeter even in some cases but in general it's going to depend on your model that you're working on and how you can uh, maintain a realistic uh, bevel size or chamfer sizes or whatever the case there so uh, you're going to click smooth shading and then you're going to do a smooth corrective only smooth and when you do this you can pin boundaries if it's a non-manifold mesh potentially but the remesh usually fails on that anyway so that's if you're using something like quad remesh or uh, subdivision and whatnot but anyway so here we're doing 25 we can go up with that number as high as we need to so you can go to easily to 100 and in cases there's some cases i've used it at like 180 100 200 Pretty much max it out almost so uh, but this is the the ideal setup here because more or less you know we can work on this mesh still if we needed to you know if we want to add a bevel here perhaps you can see we'll, it'll remesh right um now when you're using box cutter with this it reorders all your stuff so it kind of causes a lot of problems you probably don't want to add this right away you can use the remesh if you want for a little while nothing wrong with that so if you want to continue working on the model doing some more cuts um, it'll just get slower basically so you, even that you could leave it there if you want you could just turn it off whatever the case but uh, this allows you to just keep cutting and dicing things up boolean ingon style right and you can end up with some pretty good results with this actually uh, rather quickly so if we want to do dots i want to knock out a little section like that perhaps you see where this is going reorder things use our tools here that are available and we have something like that. Now you want to try to keep your cylinders non-destructive as well. Okay, so there's a way you can actually make a non-destructive cylinder. You create, uh, say, a plane real quick. And we're going to turn on absolute grid snap for this. Go into the side view. So we're going to press G, hold control, and snap to the grid. We're going to take this plane and merge it center. Create a single vertex. Now we can press E, hold control. E, hold control, E, hold control. All right, so we're doing something like this. Origin points here in the center. These two vertices are at the center. So now we add a screw modifier, okay? And we can merge vertices. We can calculate order and flip if needed. If we modify this later on, what's gonna happen? Like say we take this edge, right click it and subdivide. When we pull it out, you might see the normals flip. You just click flip again and that'll work out. So these things, um, they mostly work okay. You can take a vertex, control B and then V and bevel it if needed. Uh, but this works out mostly okay in a lot of situations. And you can change like the step amounts as well here so we can keep a non-destructive cylinder that's really what you're going to want to do on this the cubic shapes aren't as bad where you need to keep them non-destructive but uh, this definitely you're going to want to use these kinds of things 
uh, because more than likely later on you might add something like a cube and maybe you bevel this and so normally we use the regular bevel modifier you can still use this there's nothing wrong with that you hit c to clamp it mouse wheel up when we do that we can change it to whatever size we need and then um we can add a weld modifier after the fact and that'll get rid of that little nuance thing there happening where we had doubles with the bevel we can change it to 0.5 per se and create a pill shape hard ops does 0.7 and so now, trying to follow along with this, uh, with Vanilla Blender, uh, you can still do this with Vanilla Blender, but your modifiers, you're just going to want to set them up manually. And you'll have to reorder them, or however you see fit. But we can do things like radial arrays as well. Uh, with hard ops, it's easier, so I always recommend getting hard ops for these kinds of features. So you select the one, select the other. Hit Q and then do mesh tools, radial array, and hold shift when clicking this. We'll get this going on. You'll see we have that happening. So we can do a Boolean subtraction, right? LZ, shade everything auto smooth. Maybe it'll look a little nicer. Okay. The shading's not too important. What's most important is that you're hitting the shapes you need. Okay. So you do have to think about that. And we should be able to move this one around in edit mode. And Get it to go like so okay and so if you're making a shape like that that's awesome and now you can see where this starts to come into effect on how you can keep things mostly non-destructive because later on you're going to want to remesh this thing if you don't have enough segments going around when you're doing the smooth you're going to have to smooth way too much and you're going to lose all your edges so what you want to do is you want to have it non-destructive so you can adjust the um the steps here so that's it's going to stay like so, and so later on when you want to create a low poly, right, you just readjust this to a lower level, perhaps. And because of the way we did this, these ones as well, that bevel was a modifier, we can also crank them up and down as well. Okay, so being able to do this is extremely important if you choose to go with this workflow. Otherwise, you'll have a really hard time smoothing things correctly. Unless you go destructive with it, which... Uh, still requires more geometry in general. So instead of using maybe like 32 side cylinders, you might want to go with 64 sides perhaps, right? And even then, it, you might want to go higher than that. So definitely doing them non-destructive, I think is a better way to go there. So with this one, we had this cylinder here. And if I pull that out a little bit, it's just cutting all the way across the shape. So you can also try doing things like creasing on the edges here. Right, this, you might get away with this as well, where you hit Control 1 or Control 2, and you subdivide it with the creases at the max there. You're just using it as a Boolean shape. If this geometry of this cylinder is not influencing anything at this end point here, this would be okay to do this. And you, So you can make this even behave something like a non-destructive workflow as well, of sorts. Right? And so, of course, our remesh is getting lost because of um, hard ops and box cutter and everything. So... Uh, but eventually you end up remeshing this, right? And so we'll take that remesh a little bit higher. And we'll turn a smooth corrective on after this. So shade, uh, smooth shading, smooth corrective, only smooth. And now we can adjust the amount here to whatever we need it to be. Sometimes you got to go high with these. So if you want to go, that's maybe too high. Let's do like 40 in this case, maybe. All right, the idea is just to smooth it out just enough so that uh, we don't see too many of these uh, end poles necessarily, all right? And if we shade everything smooth and we adjust that remesh again, you can see we're going to have to go pretty high poly here, basically changing that voxel size quite heavily. Um, and it's going to start to really slow down, at least on my system. The modifiers tend to do that as opposed to um, another way I'm going to show you here in a second, but... Uh, anyway, so now you can change that repeat amount up even further if you needed to. And it should hold those edges a little bit tighter and uh, smooth them out a little bit better. All right. So that's the process for the most part. Now here's the fun part. Um, if you don't want to use this per se, you can go to a destructive method, which also works out really well. So this one, you want to take this mesh when you're pretty sure you want to remesh it and you're done with it and you don't want to add anything else really to it. Uh, you could duplicate it. You can press Shift D and duplicate it. Right click, convert it to a mesh. I'll set it out here to the side so we can see what's going on here. Uh, but this is more or less a um, Boolean Ingon model with sharps on it, right? So 
If we use hard ops, we can just quickly, um, in object mode, hit Q and sharpen it. Go into edit mode. You'll see all of these edges have been marked sharp, or marked now, anyways. So that bevel weight on it sharp and um, creases as well, I believe. So uh, we can look at it, we can see what's going on here. All of it's kind of uh, split up into nice, neat little uh, sections for the most part, right? Uh, you might have to add some sharps in here, or you might want to mark some edges if they didn't get held uh, doing this. So you'll just, you know, select an edge, hit Q, and possibly mark it or unmark it as needed. Uh, but this is where it goes to the next step. So I'll duplicate out. Next step is we would take this into sculpt mode. And what we're going to do is we're going to set uh, face sets, initialize face sets by sharps. Okay. And so now we have these here. And we can utilize these later on if needed for um, controlling the mesh in different manners. And you can see, all right, it's all different little categories here. That's not necessarily a good cut thing going on down there. Anyways, that might cause some issues. But we can go ahead and mark it. And we can use the remesher here in um, sculpt mode. So we can just leave it as is for the most part, except we want to change the voxel size. And so having changed it to millimeters, it's a lot easier to read. And you can say, like, we want a um, three millimeters, perhaps, right? And so when we do that, set it to three millimeters, and we hit Control R, so R and then Control R. Blender 4 changed those hotkeys again. I don't know what it is now over there. I'm staying with 3.6 for now, um, but it might take a little while, but it does remesh, and you, the benefit of this is that you're, you're not stuck with that stack kind of recalculating all the time. So once you do this once, it's what you see is what you get. You can see this is a very high polygon piece now. It's a 5 million piece. I don't even know if I need it that high, to be honest. So I could take this maybe down further, perhaps. Yeah, let's take it down a little bit. We'll do it at um, yeah, 5 millimeters, and we'll remesh it with that. Okay. So control R. So we'll see how much gets knocked off here. 5 million to probably 3 million-ish. Up oh, 2 million. That's good. All right. So still dense. Now, but what, are we, what we gain from this anyways is that um, we can use the face sets to our advantage because we have the mesh filter. In the mesh filter, we can set the smooth. And so if we want to kind of like pre-smooth an area before we work all the edges, we can do that now. We can press H here in the middle, for example. And we can say, click and drag to the right. And you won't see real any changes usually when dragging to the right when they're super high densities. Uh, so you just drag a little to the right and then let go. You'll get the little filter mesh thing down here. And you can say you want to smooth this by 40 first, right? And then it'll smooth only this area, basically. And as you say, hey, okay, that's good enough. And we press H to get back out of that. You see these ones were lower resolution. So we're going to want to definitely, uh, we can hit Shift H, Shift H, face sets, invert the face sets. Now we can take both of these and we can smooth these. And these ones might need like 80. Right? So we can do this independently in certain sections now. Now it will cause distortions on the edges if you're not careful. So sometimes you might leave them a little bit faceted still, so the next time you smooth the whole thing overall, you won't have as big of an issue with that. But just ever so slightly. You don't want to get carried away with this. These ones happen to be a very low repeat amount, which is nice. Um, yeah, maybe something like that. You see, like, we can barely see it. That might be good. All right. So nothing prevents you from sculpting on this either. Like, there's no reason you can't break out a sculpt tool and just start uh, adding little different details to this, perhaps. Like, if you wanted to scrape an edge, perhaps. Um, you could definitely do that at this point and wouldn't have any issues with it. So, it's quite useful. Uh, you're not going to get away with, like, stamping, though, when you have, like, words in the, the mesh here. It's just not high enough resolution for that, unfortunately. But uh, you could try to attempt it, but I don't think it would work out well. Um... I think these are, looking back at them, they're not maybe smooth enough. So let's go ahead and uh, do that one more time real quick. We'll go back to the mesh filter. Let's move it out to the right. We'll just do another 5 on it maybe, or 10. Oh, seems like it needs more this time. Uh, is that working or not? Right, it doesn't even look like it's doing anything. Oh, it is. Okay. All right, good enough then. I think we're good at that. 
So we could just run it with the, the modifier at this point if we wanted to. If we wanted to not uh, screw it all completely up, we could do that. Uh, but there's nothing that says you can't just use the sculpt tools either, where you just click to the right and you say you do a, an 80 on all of it perhaps at this point. You can see it's going to just smooth it out just a little bit more. Go back to object mode. We'll see our end result. And overall, not too bad, right? It's looking pretty decent. So, and of course, you would want to decimate this at a certain point. And so go ahead and add a decimate. And we can go ahead and drop that down. I think 0.4 on this one might work out well. We'll find out in a second. But we want to look for errors. We just don't want to have any errors in the mesh that would cause it to bake badly for the most part. So you can add an extremely large amount of detail to something like this and then remesh it. It would be, not be much different than what we just did. We have little cuts here and little cuts there. But you do want to try to keep it as non-destructive as possible. You can see that when I have these stacked, when it's um, remesh, smooth corrective, and then decimate on top of it, it gets really slow. And so uh, you see, we can start to work this back, basically. And it's still not low enough res for myself, so I'm going to apply it. It's going to sit here and think for a second again. But what you're looking for is little errors in this uh, this mesh here, in these flat areas. That's usually where a lot of errors pop up first. But you also want to check the edges as well. You can see it whittles away a little bit at the flat faces, and then it gets rid of the uh, curved faces um, later on. And sometimes if you push this too far, you'll get like a... Uh, Kind of a weird effect on all the curves, perhaps. So you got to be careful with that one as well. And sometimes it might be useful to just decimate it once, just to get it to a lower state. So the next time you do it, um, it doesn't take so long to calculate. And then uh, we'll do another point four here, and see what happens with uh, this mesh overall after that. You see, I got rid of a lot of stuff here in the middle. And this is kind of an ideal situation, I think. We don't see any errors occurring here for the most part. Um, but what the errors would look like is they would look like um, like the mesh is all running to a point. Like it's all really stretched out to like a point like that. Um, anyway, I just don't see it here occurring. Not right now. Maybe a little bit in here it is um, in some of these areas. But yeah, it would look more like this, right? That's kind of the error perhaps. Uh, sometimes on the cylindrical pieces, it's not too bad, but you'd want to turn wireframes off and just look at it. And if it's not looking too distorted, it's mostly correct. Okay. And so, yeah, you, it's hard to get away from the poles though on these edges. Sometimes they just, they won't go away. All right. Like they, if you have to keep in mind, like how, how big this thing is and how much uh, screen space it might occupy, but also would your normal maps even pick that kind of little issue up? It's a possibility they, they barely even show up, right, in the normal map. And so uh, with that in mind, it, last ditch effort, if they really do bug you still at the very end of it, you could try to brush them out in something like Photoshop, if that's a possibility. But um, save that for like a last, um, last ditch effort, I would say. Um, but overall, I think you'd have good results out of this if you were to bake it. So uh, not a big, big deal there. So overall, you can see how this is starting to work out now. Quite interesting of a workflow. Easier said than done. It definitely takes a lot of um, practice working with basic geometric shapes and doing booleans and setting the different orders with them and whatnot. So this is going to be something you want to actually work towards if you're just getting into Blender. And so this video definitely was not for you beginners necessarily, but... This will get you off to the right start with it anyways, I think. And hope you enjoyed the video anyway, so I'll check you out in the next one. All right, take care.